So, hi, I'm Mark Anderson, just making a little video to explain a little bit about teaching and learning with technology uh, using the new IPVO V4K Pro USB document camera. And I mean, you can use the, the visualizers for many, many different purposes. But I'm just going to use it in, in a real life scenario to explain something. So, when it comes to teaching and learning with technology, there are a number of things to consider. And in a good starting point with teaching and learning with technology uh, is thinking about teaching and learning itself. Now, as teachers, and when we're teaching uh, and we want to deliver something and work with our, our young people, what we're keen to try and do really is think carefully uh, about what teaching and learning looks like. So what is good teaching and learning? Well, it's when we think about our content. OK, so we want to um, think, what, what is it we're actually teaching? What is it we want to actually uh, share with our young people? And so we've got lots of that content knowledge uh, deeply ingrained in ourselves because we've completed our degrees. We're subject specialists. And so we've got this content knowledge. We have also trained as teachers. So alongside this content knowledge, uh, we've got our pedagogical knowledge. So content knowledge, really, really important. And then obviously our pedagogical knowledge. Also really, really important. And Shulman, uh, back in 1984, uh, postulated that good teaching and learning uh, is when we combine our content knowledge with our pedagogical knowledge. And this formed what he called PCK. Okay, so PCK, and that's the Pedagogical Content Knowledge Model. Now, that's all very well and good, but when it comes to teaching and learning with technology, things, you know, well, where does technology fit into this PCK model? Well, it doesn't really. So how can we actually add in and think carefully about how technology can support all of these things as well? Well, how do we go about doing that? Well, we need to think carefully about our technological knowledge. And this is one of the areas that is particularly difficult for uh, people to take on board because as, as teachers, we spent a lot of time thinking about our content when we did our subject degrees. We've done our postgrad courses, if we've done it that way, or if we did a BA, then we've done it alongside our content knowledge gathering. But our pedagogical knowledge is there, but many, many teachers don't have the technological knowledge. So um, this is a, an area that um, clearly needs a bit of time spent on it. But when you combine those three sort of domains there, content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and our technological knowledge, what we have here then is what Kohler and Mishra called sometime later, after Shulman had done this uh, work with PTK, Kohler and Mishra came along and called this TPAC. Now, good teaching and learning, um, is when we combine our content knowledge and our pedagogical knowledge. If we, if we can say that as a standard, then that's what that is. Um, but actually, good teaching and learning should really reflect and think carefully about the benefits that technology can bring to the mix when it comes to teaching and learning. Now, you might think, you might be mistaken for thinking then that we must, you know, whilst we have to go through our content, we have to think about teaching and learning, we must, 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 must use technology. This this sweet spot uh, here in the middle where we're combining those three things uh, should be de rigueur, what we do all the time. And to be fair, that is true, but it's not about using technology all of the time. What Kola and Mishra said, which I think is really, really important, is that TPAC is highly skilled teaching and learning with or without technology, because sometimes that is the best option. And that's absolutely true. Technology can really, really help. Um, using the visualizer here to help me explain this. This is a good use of technology uh, to try and explain a concept. Uh, research from the Education Adam Foundation talks about how technology can improve explanations and modeling. And again, a visualizer such as this V4K Pro can really help with that. But there are times when it isn't the right thing to do. And so TPAC asks us very carefully to think about content knowledge. That's really important. It asks us to think about our pedagogical knowledge. And from these things, we'll know how best to introduce and deliver these topics. When we start getting confident and competent in using our um, using technology, 
Okay, we can then make those informed choices about whether it's right to or right not to uh, use technology in the classroom. So what else can help us with all of these different things? Well, thinking carefully about teaching and learning with technology. Okay, one of the big problems, as I mentioned in that last little section, is about confidence, teacher confidence with technology. Uh, so let's just explore uh, teacher confidence for just a moment. Teacher confidence in using technology. There are four levels, apparently, of teacher confidence in using technology. Now you can't see the four underneath there, so I can just shift this up here, and it should come in here. But basically you have these four levels. First up, we have survival. Now, I'm not going to try and recreate this as beautifully as Sylvia Duckworth did, okay, um, with the sketch notes that are around this. Uh, but um, at the bottom level here, you've got survival. This is, you know, you, you don't really know what you're doing. You haven't received much training. Uh, you're not very confident about using technology. Um, and because you haven't had any training, uh, you can't really use technology uh, full stop or, or, or in the ways in which uh, you'd like to try and do or you've seen your colleagues doing and all these different things. But when you have some training and, and you've had a chance to try a few things out, then you can really start to get to a stage where you're starting to gain some sort of mastery in using technology. And that's really good. That comes following on from having done uh, some training, trying things out, uh, uh, a bit of CPD, a bit of inset time, perhaps a bit of time in department meetings, talking about how you can use technology, how you could use a visualizer, these different sorts of things. Once you've actually got that mastery, then you might start to see a little bit of impact with your use of technology, which is absolutely fantastic. And then once you've really started getting there and, and it becomes exactly what you do all the time, it becomes part of how you work, your students know what you're doing, uh, they, they are well versed and trained in how to interact with the technologies that you're using inside your classroom. When that's done, you can then sort of really start, then start thinking about innovating. Well, how can I use my technology to do even more uh, than I have been able to throughout? Now, the thing is, in any school, you'll have people right along the spectrum here around their confidence and competence. And so as a school leader, what I always try to do, this is what I share with school leaders nowadays as well, is rather than trying to make a one-size-fits-all approach to sort of sharing about how we can use technology for teaching and learning in the classroom, let's think about where people are on this scale. Because the work that somebody like me might do with people who are confident already at this sort of impact and innovation stage is just here, okay, they, they can really understand what I'm trying to share and all the rest of it. If, if I try and go into that sort of level with those in survival, I'm going to turn them off, they won't understand what I'm doing, they'll feel threatened, scared, incompetent, all these different things. And so just like we would with our students in the classroom, we want some you know, sound and well-grounded CPD uh, for our teachers in school. We need to think carefully about where they are on this learning journey. Just like we would try and personalise and differentiate and support students in our classroom, so we need to do that with our staff as well. And when technology costs as much as it does, and you want the return on that investment and the impact from that investment uh, on standards and, and, and um, standards from students and standards from teachers, in the classroom, then it makes absolute sense to try and, you know, match where people are on this scale to the support and training that they receive as educators. So I hope you found this little video interesting. Uh, my name is Mike Anderson, ICT evangelist, and I'm using the brand new IPVO V4K Pro document camera, which I'm writing a little review on. So I hope you find it all that useful, and thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Thanks.